Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Mera naam Anjali hai. Hum aaje hai. Kaise hai? And today we're going to be doing another Sadguru. And Anjali and I have done, I don't know, very few, very, I am very few, very yeah. many um, Sadguru videos. Uh, he definitely has such wisdom in his words, I feel like. He never says anything mean to anybody but there's always a hidden message behind his meanings um and just amazing amazing uh i really enjoy listening to him speak so this one we're doing is called our ramayan and mahabharat a myth and i know it's um youth and truth so he goes to different colleges or different schools and lets the kids ask him questions and so this is his answer um to one of their questions and um, we've been learning about Ramayan. Yeah, we've done Love Kush, and then we've done, we're doing the kid version of Ramayan, and we're soon later going to do the real old version of Ramayan. The original. The original one. Version. We will do it, but we're trying to get through, like Anjali said, the Love Kush song we did, which was beautiful, um, and we started the first two. So if you haven't seen them, go back to our homepage. We did... Um, Sitama's Swamitsar? Swayamwar? Swayamwar, sorry. <laughs> and um, uh, Bhagwan Ram's Vanvas. Um, so we just did those two. And now we're going to try every Sunday to post one, if not two, of the next couple clips from the series yeah. until we finish it. And then we'll start with the, the original um, old school ones. But we're trying to get like Noah to be able. And he sits for them. I think this last one he disappeared, but he actually watched it. Our computer just had a glitch. And so it didn't record him watching it. And then the next time we tried to do it, he was so tired. He needed a nap. So um, anyways, back to Sadhguru, which we're excited to watch because yes. um, I love his wisdom ready mm -hmm. moving on to the mythology um, so we know that uh, Iliad was written by Homer right uh, a blind guy uh, he wrote that there are 14,000 horses uh, but since we know that he could not have seen it for himself uh, we believe that there's some sort of um, historical you know uh, storytelling going on there uh, would you say, but, but nowadays, uh, all the scriptures, religious scriptures, are taken as gospel. So should we also believe that uh, there is uh, myth-making in, in Ramayana, in Mahabharata, and that taking them as gospel rather than just work of literature is, is wrong? I, I don't see anybody taking Ramayana and Mahabharata as a gospel. There are certain factions which are… No, no. They cannot because they'll get freaked out with confusion. Because there are all kinds of people in Mahabharat, the best sort of man, the worst sort of man, in between every kind of man and woman, is there over hundred thousand characters, how can you make a gospel out of it? So you said storytelling, I, I don't know if you've seen the byline of Youth and Truth, not the seriousness of gospel but the playfulness of gossip, because gossip has always been reliable. <laughs> no, at any time in history, nobody went by the official version. Whatever the official version came, people asked around with their friends and relatives what happened. When five <laughs> people said five different things, people learned out of their wisdom to extract some truth out of the gossip. But people always relied more on the gossip than the official version, isn't it so? It's not just today, always. However, given that this gossip can lead to a transformation of this truth to an extent where it's lost forever, do you think that's troubling? See, first of all, you are questioning, did it actually happen, right? No. So, we are saying that the same argument which you have given is the argument which is usually used these days to say that uh, buildings which were constructed by the Mughals were actually not Mughal structures. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I get the However, point. <laughs> that's gossip being misinterpreted completely. <laughs> now, uh, See, if you come further south, people are questioning whether Rama existed or not, okay? This is a, just a question of uh, poor memory. When the entire nation has been talking about it for thousands of years, 
Now the problem is your trust in printed word is more than the spoken word, that is the whole problem. But you must understand this is a oral culture. We always transmitted most significant things orally. You may… you may think it's insignificant because it's not written, but anybody can write it down. People have written it down now, now it's a printed word. But now somebody questions, did Rama exist or not? Not in one place, in entire culture, when everybody is talking about the same story with minor variations here and there, it could not have been just made up by all the people. So Isn't I guess… It? I guess his point was also by bringing in the Iliad example the same, that the war on Troy did happen. But the fact that Homer says that fourteen thousand horses were there is clearly not truth. Maybe not. Maybe Ram did exist, but uh, other facts which are… other things… See, are uh, we are… after all Indians, we… Uh, we invented zero. <laughs> yes, you did. We have certain freedom in using number of zeros. <laughs> We're taking liberty with that. Don't… Uh, <laughs> see, see whether… whether six, seven thousand years ago, whether hundred thousand men fought or uh, ten thousand men fought, doesn't make a difference. The way the story is said in this country is not for its facts, but for its truth. You're trying to bring out a certain truth. Mm -hmm. The fact of it, whether hundred thousand men fought, ten thousand men fought, what does it matter? You don't have to manage that war today, it's over <laughs> So the important thing is, what is there for me to learn from that, all right? If… Uh, if that's a question mark, we can go ahead with that. I guess that was his point itself, that when you look at religious texts, as you would learn from… See, don't call them religious texts, this is nation's history. Yes. So, let's say if you look at another piece of literature, you would derive learnings from no. it. Literature is different, history is different <laughs> Literature… literature can be fiction, history is written, in a dialectical way, so that it's always relevant for you. I'm saying six thousand years ago, whether a man existed or not, what's my problem? Unless he has something to contribute to my life today, isn't it? However, if history has been written and the facts of the history are not clear… See, this is what I'm saying. The fact is like this. Suppose six thousand years ago, Rama had a wife whose name was not Sita, what's my problem <laughs> We are not questioning whether the name was… Not only the name, I'm saying, okay, he was not… his fa father's name was not that, it was something else, he was somebody else, what does it matter we to are me? are even questioning the sequence of events over here. You can. How they? See, sequence of events also you can question, but what I'm asking is, a six thousand year old drama, if it got a little mixed up, it is not your problem, the problem is just this, is there something for us to get from that? Sure. That's all the thing is. Now, why we are worshipping Rama in this country is, he's not a super success. He's a serial disaster, if you look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even today is having real estate issues, that's why you brought this up <laughs> uh, but uh, it is not today alone, uh, it's not today alone, right from the beginning of his life, he is in trouble and trouble and trouble and trouble. <laughs> See, he is a rightfully a king. He is coronated at the age of seventeen or eighteen. He ma marries a, a princess and within a one or two years, he is sent to the forest. They didn't go to the jungle for picnic. As uh, some of the television serials are showing Rama Sita doing all that, <laughs> no, it is a… it is a like, you know, throwing him out of the kingdom from his power and everything. That itself would have shattered a man, but he settled down there. But Rama is also an insecure person who, when… <laughs> when Sita came back to him, first she sat through… We will… Fire. we will come there, don't first jump. First let's there. kidnap her, no <laughs> See, now you're changing the… <laughs> See, now you're changing the sequence of things. <laughs> First, let's kidnap her, all right <laughs> Now, <laughs> now uh, the Sri Lankan people come and kidnap his wife and go away. After all, after all he is a king. 
If uh, somebody steals his wife and takes her away some three thousand kilometers down south, there's no GPS to even find out where is Sri Lanka, <laughs> all right? At a time like that, being a king, he could have found a local solution. There would be any number of women to marry the men, he's a king. But he goes in search of her, not with a big army, just him and his brother, like ordinary people. If a man has to walk three thousand kilometers down south, not knowing where she is, whether she is alive or dead or what's happened, then she must mean so much to him, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why would a man walk so that distance? Now, he goes there, he forms a Tamil army, don't forget this <laughs> and then uh, there is a fight, kills hundreds of people, burns down a beautiful city, gets back his wife comes and settles down. Before this, I will tell you, he goes for a year of penance in Himalayas. His brother asks, are you crazy? This man stole your wife and now you're doing penance for his death. He said he had ten basic qualities, Ravana. Killing those nine, which were horrendous qualities, I… no penance for me, no repentance for that. But he was also a great devotee and I killed that also. So one year of penance the man goes for. This is not a <laughs> And then he settles down and his wife is pregnant. You must understand for a king, his wife is pregnant means it's not just about a child, it's a progeny for his empire and there are many things involved. No sonogram, so he doesn't know whether it's a girl or a boy or boys or girls or anything. But once again a political situation evolves where he has to send his wife to the forest which you are saying is insecurity. Uh, not that part. <laughs> so, we can even begin from the first point in which after he rescues Sita, Sita has to sit through a fire to prove that she is pure. For whom? So that other people will accept her. Because Rama cared about how people saw him. Rama, when he came back, a random dhobi in your kingdom said that, Sita, I am not like Ram who will keep a woman in my house who might have a child which is not mine. For this, Rama sends away Sita again to the forest. That… that point, is the insecurity you're talking at about. At any point, Rama wanted his people to love him. No, no, let's come to this properly. Today in our country, there are many kinds of things. I'm asking you, do you want a leader for this nation who puts the people of this nation above his own family and his personal love? I'm asking you. Or do you want a Dhritarashtra, at any cost, my son? You want a man who puts the citizens of this uh, country above his family. This is not a, just another woman for him. He went and fought a battle for her, walked three thousand kilometers. This is not just another woman. He's living for her, but still he sends her back to the jungle when she's pregnant, knowing fully well that it could be his future for this kingdom. And he is putting… see, it is not just about a dobi, this is what your mistake, you are taking these things literally. When a dobi said, what it is being said is ordinary people are talking like this. Ordinary people have no trust in the king, that he's… she… he's just brought some woman from somewhere and he's made her our queen, because queen is seen as a mother to the nation. We don't want such a woman as our mother, that's what they are saying. She went and lived with some man somewhere. This is what the people of those times are saying. So if the king says, I don't care what you think, I love my wife and keep her, that would be not a good king, not a good administrator. So he is putting his people above somebody that he loves very, very dearly and she's pregnant. It's not a small thing for him, it means a world. But still, he sends her to the jungle. This should be bowed down to, this is why we bow down to the man. No? Please say it. No, no. No, no, why? He has something to say, please. So, there are different types of responsibilities of you as a person. As a king, there are different responsibilities and as a human, as a family member, you have different responsibilities. Now, you can't just throw away your wife and send her to a jungle. <laughs> it's, it's like just objectifying her. It's not treating her like another human who's pregnant, who'll need different things and have promised her different things. Well, then uh, you are against Gautam Buddha, you are against Rama, everybody. But you need to understand this in the right context, that is, 
If this woman didn't mean anything to her, he wouldn't have traveled down to Sri Lanka, fought a battle and brought her back, isn't it? It was his pride about what… How, how can you <laughs> His pride you could have got, he could have got a hundred wives around him if he wished, but he went for this person who means so much to him. Uh, moving on… Uh... No, no, you must see the words that he's uttered. <laughs> you must see the words he uttered about Sita, what she means to him how he cried to Lakshmana and what he Sometimes said. actions are way more important. Why are you reading all these evil intentions in his mind <laughs> that he did not express anywhere? He did not express… With our words, we can say anything. See, as far as you are concerned, you know only what you read. You don't know anything else about his life, neither me nor you, all right? Perfect. So, from what you read, nowhere does it say that he was insecure. Nowhere does it say he went for his pride. Nowhere does it say that… No, no, everywhere it says very clearly. Let me tell you, the reason why he is worshipped today is, though life threw disasters after disasters at him, the man never became resentful, never became hateful, never became angry. He did not become a recluse either. He went about fulfilling every duty that he has to do with a personal pain and grief that he is carrying all his life. The man went about doing the best he can do for his praja of the day. If this is being accused of being as pride and this… Sadhguru, he really speaks well when he talks. And yeah. he, the guys kept coming at him with like, with the facts say, you know, and they wanted to know But it exactly. doesn't say, and nothing's gonna be a hundred percent right. Right. Like, but who cares? <laughs> yeah. Was there five dogs and three monkeys and ten fish? You know… Was Sita's name something else? Yeah. Who cares? Was Sita's name Anjali? No. She did… Like... She still went to the forest. She still did these things for Ram. That's the main part of the story. Right. That's in every story that you yeah. see. So like he said, like, didn't matter what part you came from, what story you heard, most of the story is similar. Yeah. And that is what makes it truth. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, um, you know, did it have ten, you know, horses at the time? Or did they get married on this day exactly? Or did they this happen or that happen? But the essence of the story of Ramayan is there. Yeah. The, like, um, the message behind it. Yeah. So, you know... Bhagavan Ram really has such qualities that everybody should aspire to, no yeah. matter what your religion, caste, race, Doesn't whatever matter. you believe. He has, you know, he puts his country first as a king. Then he loves this woman so much he goes after her. And then, again, has to put his country first again. Yeah. He, he doesn't want his family to fight. You know, so he's like, let me go, I'll go to the forest, no question, you know, not, you know, like Sadhguru said, he, he doesn't hate anybody for it, he doesn't no. talk about all his woes and sorrows, you know, how bad it was for him. He does stuff for his wife, and then, like Sita Ma, and then he'll do stuff for his country, like he's going to have to make sacrifices, the world exactly. is not going to be perfect, it's not going to be perfect, yeah. so we just have to live with the sacrifices and make it better as we go on. Right, and yeah, that's right, like everybody has sacrifices, you don't always want to do one thing or the other, but yeah, yeah, I like he kept being like, they kept trying to get him to pinpoint like how and why and this is not right and and he was like no 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 like every Mahabharata story is going in Ramayan story is going to be different it's right. going to be tweaked just a little bit because gossip like you said that was my favorite gossip. quote yeah, <laughs> yeah that was my favorite quote because people say stuff and then it's carried on it's like when you play the game telephone it's going to get mixed up it's gonna get a little bit different every time but the message is still there the right. real part of it is still there and that's what he said like everybody used to just it was storytelling that's how it used to be yeah. everybody would tell stories and this is how you know things got passed generations to generations to generations he's like so somebody wrote down their version of it or what they heard and you know i'm sure there's a lot of different versions of it like yeah. he said gospel and i think the the kids were thinking like the 
it has to be the truth. Like every word in it has to be true. But it's But why? Not. Why does every part of it have to be true? Because it's never going to be exactly right wherever you look. Right. So just having this story, not I don't know what to call it a story, I guess. Having this it, it I guess when when it's written down and it's a little bit different in every book, but don't take it literally. You want to take the essence behind it. And I think that's what Sadhguru was the trying to get. The behind it. The, yeah. The, to believe what you need to believe. Like Ram was good and he had sacrifices because mm -hmm. everybody does. But he didn't blame anyone for it. And, you know, he did what he felt was best for his country men. You know, like Modi, just yeah. put your country first. And we need a few people like this. I don't think everybody can be like Ram exactly. Not everybody is going to be exactly like Ram. Not yeah. everybody is going to make a bunch of big, huge sacrifices for their country and for, for their, their family. family. Or have to choose between country and family. Yeah. Those are a lot of hard things to go through. But to... We need a few... I mean, Modi is one of those examples. Like, he doesn't have family he puts the country first and he does so much for it you know we have um like sonu sud who does yeah. a lot for um you know the migrants and and it, he's giving up so much you know you need a few of these people that can do these amazing things and and you need people i think that just try their best and do what you can i guess to be the best person you can be and i think that's really yeah. what it's about in the end like everybody has to make sacrifices they're just going to be different every way yeah but you do the best you can and bhagwan ram and sita ma are people i think to feel like that's somebody you can look and say this is how i want to be i want to cherish family but i also cherish my country and, you know, it's not always about what I want personally, but yeah. when you have children, what the kids need first, you know, and, and just living a good life. And yeah, just amazing. Yeah. And we're really excited to learn about the whole story of Ramayan. Definitely. Watch the rest of the movie and then start on the real original The original Ramayan. version. So look for it every Sunday. We're going to post... One or two. Um, one at least two. one. We'll try to do two if we can so we can get through the cartoon version a little bit faster and, and do the original version. Mm -hmm. But this is our way of learning with you. And, um, and then if you haven't subscribed, definitely join the Wonderful Jan family. We need to grow and share and like and all those good things. We have Facebook and Twitter. Um, email and P.O. Box. P.O. Box and throwing comments down below is probably one of the best ways. That's one of the best ways we see um, the stuff. This is our way of learning and growing and sharing our experiences here in the U.S. And With what you. we think is good for India and what we've learned from India that's good for us here and good for everyone. Yeah. I mean, India has brought so many wonderful things yoga zero the number, number zero, zero. <laughs> and um you know just the culture and the music and the food and there's just and ramayan like we said this is definitely one of those things that everybody can learn from bhagwan ram and see them all. yeah um so i hope you guys enjoy this as much as we did we really enjoy Sadhguru, and we'll see you tomorrow bye, bye.